Well, I've got the headstock uh, pulled off of the lathe, and I'm, I've got it cleaned up, uh, partially cleaned up. Um, it's about as far as I'm going to take it, I think, for now, until I see uh, if I'm going to have to pull it apart for the uh, bearings. So, um, but I did want to show something at this point uh, before we go any further about the headstock and the back gears. And, and basically, uh, and this, this is the old belt, I cut it off and I'm just using this to kind of show how it works, but um, you have the spindle runs through the inside of this whole headstock from this end to this end. And uh, what rides on that is a couple of different things, but uh, these parts here, this flat, the two V-belt spots, this flat and this gear uh, are essentially uh, running off of the belt and they turn the spindle by way of this bull gear here and there's a pin that goes from the bull gear into this and if it's engaged then the belt turns the uh, pulleys, the pulleys turn the bull gear and the bull gear turns the spindle. That's how it works but if you disengage this now, the bull gear can be independent of this part here. This, this is still driven by the belt, but the bull gear is not necessarily driven by it. Yeah, they're kind of stuck together there a little bit, but you get the idea. Uh, and that's where back gears come in, because sometimes driving something with a belt, it doesn't give you a slow enough speed or a, uh, enough power to do what you're trying to do. Maybe you're taking a heavy cut. But with the back gears here, I can get it down to 40 RPM on the spindle, which is pretty slow. Uh, and the way we do that is engage the, uh, the back gears. You notice this spins freely, including this gear here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna engage this gear to a gear down underneath. There's a shaft from that one up here, and it'll engage the bull gear, and then as the belt turns, it'll actually drive gears, uh, and we can do that like a reducer to get the power and the lower, slower speed. So um, in essence, what we're doing is converting belt drive to a geared drive. And if you've got a gear head lathe, you don't have to worry about any of this because everything is back gears on a gear head lathe. In other words, everything is gear driven. Uh, once you get past the motor. So how do the back gears work? We've, we've disengaged, so the spindle turns independently of these uh, center part of the spindle. Now to engage the back gears on this one, and it's different on all the different machines, but on the Logans, a lot of them had this uh, uh, rack in here. And you pull it to engage the gear, and there's a little pawl here that holds this from going back in. And now you see when you move the, uh, when the belt drives these, it drives this gear, which engages that gear, which engages that gear, which engages the bull gear, which makes the spindle turn. But you can see that the spindles, or the bull gear and the spindles turning a lot slower than the uh, belt pulleys here in the center. And that's kind of the, the whole idea. Let's take a look at what it looks like underneath. So I mentioned that there's a gear here, and when we engage the back gears, there's an uh, a, uh, eccentric gear that actually moves, shifts this one up and engages with this one. So as we pull this lever out, it'll shift up and engage with this. Should anyway. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, but this did shift up. It doesn't take much, just the width of the teeth, essentially. And this is the pawl I mentioned. There's a pawl here. You push that in. You can push it in like that, and the gear drops back down. Pull it back up, and it pulls back up. So this is engaged with the gear on the pulley drive on the top. You see, it's also connected to this. As we shifted it up, it engaged with the bolt bull uh, gear here that drives the spindle. So now, 
can see is uh, as the belts drive this gear, drives this gear, drives this gear, drives the bull gear, and how low you can go depends on the different gears and the ratios, but uh, that's basically how your back gears work on this machine. And one other thing I wanted to show here while we have this is if you engage the bull gear to the pulley drive here with the belts on it and engage the back gears, it freezes up your spindle. You can find that. There it goes. So you see it's locked up. And the, the reason is that this drives this, this drives that, that drives that, and that drives this, and then this drives this. They're all stuck together and they can't move. And there might be times when you want to do that, uh, if you've got a chuck that's hard to get off, uh, you could lock it up. Uh, the danger, of course, is if you put too much pressure on it, you're going to bust a gear off somewhere. Uh, but uh, anyway, just be aware of that, and if you have a geared or a back geared lathe, uh, that can be a handy thing to do from time to time if you need to get, um, if you need to freeze up your uh, spindle. I had mentioned that uh, I'd clean this up somewhat. I haven't finished cleaning it, but uh, it's good enough for now to kind of make sure everything works. But one thing I wanted to mention here is that um, the uh, previous owner liked grease. And as a matter of fact, anywhere on this lathe where he could have used oil, he liked uh, to use grease instead. You can see gears are smeared with grease. Uh, and some of that uh, has been on there for so long, it's caked up uh, and dried, and it's got the consistency now of chewing gum. And so to get all of that off of the gears, I actually had to use a wire brush and a screwdriver in the teeth uh, to get that out. But, um, it, you know, it's unfortunate that somebody uh, never saw a spot he didn't want to use grease. and. Now, all these years later, it's, uh, it causes things to seize up. I don't know if you can see the uh, quick change gearbox here, but it's, it's loaded up with grease as well. And uh, let me get that in the picture a little better. And uh, what happens is the grease does a couple of things. One, it, it does make the gears run a little smoother, I think, for a little while until all the grease squeezes out, but it's more of a, an attractant for swarf and chips and stuff. So uh, if things get up in here, they will attach themselves to the grease, I think, better or more than the uh, oil. Oil, actually, if you oil something regularly, it tends to move things through the system rather than keep it uh, in the system. The other thing is that these levers don't hardly move because there's so much caked up grease in there and on the shaft here that it's basically got everything seized up here. So I'm going to have to, I, know, I, I may have to take that apart and uh, redo the quick change gearbox too. Well, sounds like they're coming for me. Well, I've got the bed separated from the cabinet here and uh, I started cleaning it up and you can see I've got it turned on its side here. I'm not going to paint. Um, I'm just not into repainting so uh, this is not as thorough of a cleaning as I might do if I were going to paint. So it looks a little scrungy but I'm getting off the major grit, grime, accumulation of debris and swarf and you name it. Um, as best I can here. I used a wire brush and then came in with the, um, the uh, simple green. And then once you use the simple green and get it dry, you have to put oil on it right away or it'll start to rust. And so I'm kind of in the process of doing that. But while we have it on its side, I thought we'd um, show it because not everybody's seen the, uh, the bottom side of these, uh, the bed. And so um, one thing I thought was kind of interesting is this is a a casting, and if we can get this here, let's see here, you can see the joints uh, on these ribs right here. On each one of the ribs, you can see there's a, a joint right there. Uh, and so they 
they, that was where the form came together, I believe. And then this, um, I'm guessing, I can get that, is probably the, uh, where they poured. They poured, my guess is, from the inside. And there would be one like that on the top uh, half, too. And once the uh, beds were put together uh, and cast and they came out, uh, they were ground. And I think you can still see uh, some of the grinding marks. If I can get that in focus. If you look just above the rack there, uh, you can almost see it's almost a circular looking um, kind of a mark, and that would be from the grinding machine. So this still has the original grinding marks uh, from after it was cast. And you also see this rack here that we looked at. Uh, this is the rack underneath that it's actually screwed into the bottom side of the bed. And that's what the, uh, when you turn the hand wheel on the carriage, that's what moves the uh, carriage back and forth. One okay, here we are on the other side. I've, I've turned it over, and uh, this is the uh, bed ways you can see here. And these are much uh, smoother. Uh, so I don't know if they ground them with a different uh, grinder or uh, scraped them or how they did them, but um, they're much better uh, finish on this than on the sides. Of course, the sides don't matter. You can see here this uh, screw goes through and there's a whole series of these screws that hold on the uh, rack on the bottom of the bed. You can also see the other where they poured uh, here. It looks like to me they poured for the uh, casting. So that's what the bed looks like. Now we've got to get some uh, more oil on it before it starts to rust.